Well, hello for you. We're going to be talking about solving inequalities today. That's right, I said inequalities. What the heck does inequality mean? Well, we'll get to that. Um, our goal today, I know what an inequality is. See, told you we were going to get to it. And I can solve it using graphing technology. So we're going to start with um, graphing technology. Uh, and if you're doing some of these at home, you can pull up Desmos on um, the internet. Uh, or if you are going to do these at school, which I hope most of the questions are going to be, um, we'll show you how to do it on the graphing calculator as well. So we're going to start by doing this by example. And here's what I mean by an inequality. For what values of x will 0.5x plus 3 be less than 5x minus 6? OK, so what values of x will make this expression less than this expression? Well, since we're using graphing technology, we're going to talk about graphs. And what this actually is, is one line and another line. And what I'm asking is what values of x will make this line smaller or lower on the graph than this line? And so we should probably draw a graph. And I have just so happen to have this here. And if you've printed out the note, you have it there in front of you too. So this is not going to be any kind of surprise. So here's our graph. Now let's take a look. Which line is which? Um, 0.5x plus 3. Well, there's the y-intercept of 3 right here. And then if I go um, up 1 and over 2, which gives me a slope of 1 over 2, or 1 half, uh, which is what 0.5 is, um, then I get to another point on the green line. So it looks like this thing here is what I've got graphed in green. Uh, and let's double check this one too. This uh, I need a y-intercept at negative 6. And so if we take a look at this graph down here, there's our y-intercept at negative 6. And we have a slope of 5. So when I go up 5, uh, which is going to take me to negative 1, uh, and over 1, I need another point on the graph. And it looks like that's what I've got. So this is the blue graph, and this is the green graph. So it says, for what values of x will 0.5x plus 3 be less than that? Well, less than means that the green line has to be below the blue line. Well, where is the green line below the blue line? Right here. See, there's the green line. And if we look up, look up, look way up, there's the blue line above it. And so we know that this part of the green line. So what values of x is that? Well, here's where they change right here, that intersection point. Uh, before that intersection point, the green line was above the blue line. And then afterwards, the green line is below it. So this is the value of x we are interested in. That 2, right there. Anything bigger than 2, and the green line is below the blue line. Anything less than 2, and the green line is above the blue line. So since this is the one we want, we say any value of x that is greater than 2. And notice this says less than or equal to. At 2, it's equal to. So we can include that there. So any value of x that is greater than 2. Now another way we could write that, we could say x is in the interval from 2 to wherever it's going. This is a straight line, so it's going to keep going this way. This is going to keep going that way. They're never going to meet again. This is the only place they meet. Um, so from x going from 2 to infinity. And these this is called interval notation. So I'm showing the interval. 2 to infinity is an interval. And I've capped it off with a square bracket here, uh, which is kind of like putting an equal sign on there. When you put a square bracket, it means it includes 2. And I've got the round bracket at infinity because it can't include infinity. We can't, you can never get to infinity, um, let alone go beyond it. So don't believe everything Buzz Lightyear tells you. Anyway, so 2 to infinity or x is greater than 2, both of these things say exactly the same thing. And they are both the values of x that I could plug in here. Anything bigger than 2, I could plug in here. And this equality would be true. Uh, 0.5x plus 3 would indeed be less than 5x minus 6. Now we can actually, 
Oh, and this talks about a purple line. That's not really a purple line. It's kind of a blue line. Or maybe it's purple. Oh, well. Okay, let's take a look. We can actually solve this algebraically as well. Um, and I'm going to pull this little note across here that says rearranging the inequality is the same as rearranging an equality, except that when you multiply or divide each side by a negative number, the inequality sign will flip. And this says numeric example, so that must mean I should give you a numeric example. Uh, here's a numeric example. Um, 5 is greater than 2. I hope you all believe that. If not, you really shouldn't be in this course. So 5 is greater than 2. Well, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other in an, inequal in an equality. So does that work in this case? If I add 10 to both sides, do I still have a true equality? Well, if I add 10 to both sides, this says 15 is greater than 12. And that is, in fact, true. If I divide both sides, let's say I divide both sides by 3. When I divide both sides by 3, I get 5. And on this side, I get 4. So 5 is greater than 4. That is, in fact, true. Um, if I multiply both sides, let's say I multiply both sides by uh, 6. If I multiply both sides by 6, I get 30 is greater than 24. That is also true. Uh, but here's one that might throw us off. I'm going to divide by negative 3. When I divide by negative 3, I get negative 10. Uh, and 24 divided by negative 3 is negative 8. Well, negative 10 is not greater than negative 8. Negative 10, whoop, eraser. Negative 10 is less than negative 8. So whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, this sign in the middle, the equality sign, flips the other direction. And that's the only difference between solving a linear algebraic and solving a linear or a linear inequality and solving an equality. Um, so let's take a look at this one up here. 0.5x plus 3 is less than or equal to 0.5x plus 3 is less than or equal to 5x minus 6. So now we're going to rearrange and I'm going to do what I normally do. I'm going to get the variables on this side and the constants on this side. So I'm going to subtract 3 off of both sides which gives me 0.5x is less than or equal to 5x minus 9. And then I'm going to subtract the 5x off of both sides. I don't expect to see this, this little stuff I'm writing in red. I expect you to be able to do that in your head and not write it down. But I'm going to write it down in this case just to make sure everybody knows what's going on. So this side is going to be negative 4.5 when I x when I combine them is less than or equal to negative 9. And then um, I have to divide both sides by negative 4.5. And when I, whoop, that's not a 5, negative 4.5. But remember, I'm dividing both sides by a negative number. So when I divide by a negative number, when I go to simplify, this side is simply x. But since I divided by a negative number, I got to flip that sign. And negative 9 divided by negative 4.5 is positive 2. So x is greater than 2. And notice that's exactly the same thing that we got up here when we did it. Um, with uh, graphing technology. So this is solving linear. Now we are going to get into the algebraic method of solving polynomial inequalities, um, but we're going to take a look at doing it um, with the technology and with the graphing first. So the next one. For what values of x is this parabola less than this line? So let's have a look at this graph. For what values of x is this green parabola smaller than the blue line? Well, where is the green underneath the blue? And by underneath, I mean, well, exactly what that is, below. So let's take, I'm going to take a highlighter. Yeah, that's the ticket. 
this part here. And then this part here is underneath the blue line. So what we have is are these two points, which are the important points, that's where it switches from being uh, underneath here and then in between the two it's above and then it goes back underneath again. And what happened to this? Move that over. There we go. Okay, um, so it's these values of x that are uh, the interesting ones. And what are those values of x? Well, negative 5, because it's that's the value of x, and negative 1. Okay, so here's the intervals that we're most interested in. I'm going to draw these down here. And the intervals I'm interested in is where the yellow occurs. And if I take that highlighter again and just highlight the whole interval, this is the interval here where the green is below the blue. So this whole interval here is where I'm interested. And this interval over here, the green is below the blue, so it's this whole interval here that I'm interested in. And specifically, I'm just really worried about the x values. And so if I take a look at them, the x values in this interval is any x value that's less than negative 5. So I could write x is less than negative 5. And notice we've got the equal to sign up here too. So x can be equal to negative 5 because at negative 5 they are equal. And then this one over here, anything bigger than negative 1, so x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So these are the, the values of x. Any value of x that's less than negative 5, if I sub it in here, will satisfy the inequality. And any x value that's greater than negative 1, when I sub it in here, will satisfy the inequality. Now, how would I write that in interval notation? Well, x is an element um, of... Anything less than negative 5 is going from negative infinity all the way up to negative 5. And again, the equal to sign occurs there, so I'm going to use a square bracket. That's what the end of the interval, if it's got a square bracket. The round bracket means that it's not included and I can't include infinity. So x is any real number, and now I have to go greater than negative 1, so I've got negative 1 to positive infinity. And at negative 1, it can be equal to, but it can't be equal at positive infinity. So we've got two different ways of writing the same thing in interval notation. Now, this question is a little bit easier if we were just dealing with one function. Rather than having a look to see where one function is less than another function, it would be much easier if we just dealt with where the function was above or below the x-axis. That one's easy. We deal with zeros all the time when it's above or below the x-axis. So how could we make this um, into one function? So. Uh, we can actually change this by rearranging the question to get one side equal to zero. And then we will have one function on one side, and we are only worried when it's above or below zero, which will be on the other side. So I'm going to rearrange this equation so everything is over here on the left-hand side. Um, so I'm going to subtract 5x, so what I get is negative 2x squared, and when I subtract 5x on both sides, I get negative 12x, and then when I subtract 4 on both sides, I get negative 10, is less than, or is greater than or equal to 0. So now I'm only concerned with where this function is bigger than 0. Did anybody spot my screw up? I'm going to correct it now before we get any further. Um, I'm trying to do the same question two different ways, and I flipped this sign. That says greater than or equal to, and this says less than or equal to. So we want to make the two of them match up. So I'm going to flip that sign here and here, because that was what it was supposed to be in the first place. So this should be less than or equal to. Uh, and this is going to be less than or equal to. Um, so that's going to make it more sense, make more sense. Uh, so let's have a look here. I'm only concerned with when this parabola is less than zero. So rather than having those two functions to look at, I only have this one. I have this parabola. And when is this parabola less than zero? Well, this parabola is less than zero 
Um, oh, let's use that highlighter again. I'm going to use pink this time. This part, that's less than zero, and this part is less than zero. So what we've divided this thing up into are these intervals, and they're, the zeros are um, the boundaries of these intervals because it's at zero where it switches from positive to negative. And I am only concerned about where this thing is less than zero because I rearranged this, and I can rearrange it algebraically. That's not a problem as long as you've got to be careful um, with whether you're multiplying or dividing by negative one. Okay, so here's my intervals from negative infinity to negative 5. This interval in here is from negative 5 to positive or to negative 1. And this interval in here is negative 1 to infinity. Now, it's only the ones where it's less than 0 that I'm concerned about, so these are my two answers, um, which are exactly the same thing that we wrote up here. Less than negative 5, greater than negative 1, or in interval notation that way. So you can see it's actually a little bit easier to see here than it was up here. We had to worry about intersection points and all that kind of jazz up there. Well down here we only have to worry about um, the zeros where it's positive uh, and negative or above or below the x-axis. Okay. Now, you're going to be able to use the graphing calculator for these things. Um, so you need to be able to find where the zeros are. So I'm going to go over this thing. Uh, this is the parabola that we graphed. Um, y equals negative 2x squared minus 12x minus 10. And we're only concerned with where it's less than 0, but, but that means I have to find the zeros because it's at the zeros where it switches from positive to negative. So those are the, the most important parts on the parabola are the zeros, which gives us the boundary of the intervals. So we have to be able to find the zeros. Now I did this uh, when we were solving equations. I'm going to go through this again just very, very quickly. So here's our graphing calculator. I'm going to put in y equals uh, negative 2x squared minus 7x minus 6 is our parabola. And I'm going to graph it. And there it is. And that is not what we wanted. So I'm going to go back and correct it because I graphed this thing and what I wanted was this thing. So let's correct that. Uh, it should be minus 12. So 1 and second delete makes me insert a 2. Uh, and instead of 6, I want 10. And now when we graph it, uh, there we go. Now that looks more like it. So we're interested in these two uh, zeros. So here's how we're going to do it. We go second trace, second trace, second trace. This is not working. We are experiencing technical difficulty. Oh, second trace, two. There we go. Now it's working. Okay, left bound. We first have to scroll or cursor to the zero we're trying to find. So this is right about there. Now we pay attention to the fact that it says left bound and we click the left cursor key a few times, press enter. Now it's asking for right bound. So we click the right cursor key a few times till we're past the zero, press enter. If we've done it correctly, these two little arrows should be pointing at each other. If we have mixed up our left and our right, those two little arrows will be pointing away from each other and the calculator will not like you very much. Um, so let's go back and do the guess now, which means go close to the point press enter and it tells us that that is negative 5 which we already knew because we've done this before uh, and then to go to the next one um, second trace 2 over to the next one as close as we can get it and then pay attention to left bound so we want to make sure we're to the left enter right bound we're gonna go past the intercept press enter and go back to the intercept press enter and it tells us it's negative 1, which once again, we already knew. And if you can't remember all of that, or if you don't have a little gadget handy to re-watch this video every time you need it, um, there is this printout page that basically just says everything that I just said to you. And so, um, have fun finding um, the intervals that satisfy the inequalities.